subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chanzong. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 30th of March. Indian Prime Minister Modi calls for regional unity and cooperation at 5th BIMSTEC Summit. Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan loses majority as biggest ally MQMP formally quits coalition. And Sri Lanka plunges into 10-hour daily power cut amid worsening economic crisis. And now for all the details. At the 5th Beamsteak Summit hosted by Sri Lanka on Wednesday, the seven-nation regional grouping adopted a charter to expand its overall cooperation and firmed up a master plan for transport connectivity. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi at the virtual summit called for regional unity and cooperation. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi at the 5th BIMSTEC Summit chaired by Sri Lanka on Wednesday said, the region is facing challenges of health and economic security, due to which the need of the hour is unity and cooperation. India would provide $1 million US million to the BIMSTEC Secretariat to increase its operational budget, he said during the virtual summit. BIMSTEC is a regional grouping comprising India, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Myanmar, Thailand, Nepal and Bhutan that was established in 1997. The grouping accounts for 22% of the global population and has a combined gross domestic product of 2.5 trillion US dollars. Bharat Sachiwalai ke operational budget ko badhane ke liye 1 million dollar ki vittiya sahayata dega. एक्सेलेंसीज हमारे आपसी व्यापार को बढ़ाने के लिए बिम्स्टेक एफटीए के प्रस्ताव पर शीघ्र प्रगति करना आवश्यक है पीएम मोदी कॉल्ड अपॉन फेलो लीडर्स टू स्ट्राइव टू ट्रांसफॉर्म बे ऑफ बंगाल इनटू अ ब्रिज ऑफ कनेक्टिविटी प्रॉस्पेरिटी एंड सिक्योरिटी अमंग द बिम्स्टेक मेंबर कंट्रीज Amid the ongoing Russia-Ukraine war, PM Modi said that the recent developments in Europe have raised questions about the stability of international order. Along with other leaders, Prime Minister Modi also witnessed the signing of three BIMSTEC agreements, which represent progress being achieved in ongoing cooperation activities. The bloc adopted a charter to expand its overall cooperation and firmed up a master plan for transport connectivity. Moving on, at least two terrorists belonging to Pakistan-based lashkar e taiba terror outfit were neutralized by security forces in an encounter in Srinagar district of India's Jammu and Kashmir early on Wednesday. Police said that one of the terrorists identified as Reis Ahmed Bhatt was a former journalist who ran an online news portal Valley News Service in Anantnag district. But joined the terrorist ranks of lashkar e taiba in August last year and was allegedly involved in several civilian killings. His press identity card was also recovered at the encounter site, indicating a clear case of misuse of media, an official said. As we all know, there was a Raiz Bhatt, who was a police journalist. There was a lot of killing in Anantanaag district and Bijwara area. There was also a lot of shinigar, which was hit to stop the target. We got a lot of timely news, we got a lot of retaliation, so we got a lot of them. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan has lost majority after his party's biggest ally, MQMP, quit the ruling coalition on Wednesday and joined the opposition to oust him, signalling Khan may be running out of options as he tries to stay on in power. Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan has lost majority in the parliament after his PTI party's biggest ally, MQMP formally quit his ruling coalition on Wednesday after reaching a pact with opposition parties which are seeking to oust him in a no-confidence vote due next week. The announcement was made in a joint presser by MQMP convener Khalid Makbul Siddiqui alongside leaders of the joint opposition. Opposition leader in the National Assembly Shehbaz Sharif said 
Today is an important day in Pakistan's history because the joint opposition has come together for national unity. PPP Chairman Bilawal Bhutto Zardari said the country will soon see Shehbaz Sharif, whose PMLN party is ruling PTI's biggest contender as the Prime Minister. But Vizir Azam Saab has no option. He has Vizir Azam. He has to give a statement or he has not been able to say so long. I, Parliament ka session, kal hi hai, kal hi voting rakhte hai. Earlier, MQMPs Aminul Haq and Farooq Naseem also stepped down as federal ministers. Opposition parties have accused Khan of mismanaging the economy and the foreign policy. Information Minister Fawad Chaudhary in a tweet said, PM Khan won't resign and will fight till the last. Imran Khan's ouster would likely mean another round of instability in the nuclear armed country, in which the military has a long record of intervening in politics. Moving on, the poor condition of roads, absence of proper education facilities, and rising unemployment have continued to make life miserable for people in Pakistan administered Kashmir. Locals say despite their repeated pleas to the government to improve infrastructure and create jobs, their voices remain unheard. Locals in Pakistan administered Kashmir have claimed crumpling infrastructure in the illegally occupied region has continued to afflict their lives. They say poor educational facilities and lack of job opportunities over the years have fueled a sense of deprivation among the youth but the government is hardly bothered about their concerns. Locals also highlighted the need for repairing dilapidated roads and boosting connectivity in the region that they said have led to a decline in tourism. People of Pakistan and Mr. Kashmir have been waiting for years now for a better administration that could work for their development. However, corruption and ignorance in the system have become a major challenge for the growth of the region, leaving its future in dark. In news from Afghanistan, the United Nations Development Program has called on the international community to support the Afghan people as an economic crisis plaguing the country deepens ahead of the key AIDS donor conference seeking 4.4 billion US dollars. Meanwhile, China is holding a meeting of foreign ministers of neighboring countries of Afghanistan to discuss the economic and humanitarian crisis facing the country as Beijing makes a diplomatic push for the country's stability and development under the Taliban. UNDP United Nations Development Program Administrator Akim Steiner on Tuesday called on the international community to support the Afghan people as an economic crisis plaguing the country deepens. The appeal came as the UN will convene a key international donor conference seeking 4.4 billion US dollars for Afghanistan on Thursday. Roughly 23 million people are experiencing acute hunger and 95% of Afghans are not eating enough, while 10 million children are in urgent need of aid to survive, according to the United Nations, which will co-host the talks with Britain, Germany and Qatar. In the United Nations, this is a critical moment in which the world needs to understand Afghanistan but the leadership of Afghanistan must also recognize that the world can very easily turn to other crises, set other priorities, essentially consider its engagement with Afghanistan one that it does not feel able to pursue any further. Meanwhile, China is holding two multinational meetings to discuss the economic and humanitarian crisis facing Afghanistan. Afghan Acting Foreign Minister Amir Khan Muttaki is attending the meeting to be attended by foreign ministers of Afghanistan's immediate neighbors, Russia, Pakistan, Iran, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan and Uzbekistan. The U.S. Special Representative for Afghanistan, Tom West, is attending a separate meeting at the same venue of the so-called Extended Trioka. 
Last week, Wong visited Kabul where he met Muttaki to discuss political and economic ties, including starting work in the mining sector and Afghanistan's possible role in China's Belt and Road Infrastructure Initiative. In news from Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka on Wednesday began imposing a 10-hour long daily power cut as it runs out of hydroelectricity on top of a severe fuel shortage. The island nation is struggling to pay for imports of essentials including food, fuel and medicine amid a foreign exchange crisis that has also forced it to devalue its currency. Sri Lanka on Wednesday began imposing a 10-hour long daily power cut amid fuel shortages as the country struggles to pay for imports due to lack of foreign exchange reserves. That has also led it to devalue its currency amid soaring inflation. The South Asian nation has been suffering from a debt repayment crisis which has snowballed into an overall economic crisis, forcing the country to implement power cuts since February amid dwindling electricity production. Amid the fuel crisis, long queues at petrol stations are a regular affair across much of the country. State-run Ceylon Petroleum Corporation on Tuesday announced there will be a diesel shortage in the country as well on Wednesday and Thursday. Sri Lanka's worst economic crisis in decades is the result of mismanaged government finances and ill-timed tax cuts, alongside the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. Sri Lanka's President Gotabaya Rajapaksa earlier this month said his government will also discuss a rescue plan with International Monetary Fund in April. The country has already received financial support from India, China and Bangladesh in the form of credit lines and currency swaps. Launched in 2018, PETA India's e-rickshaw project has changed the lives of humans and animals. Dedicated to defending the rights of all animals, PETA replaced horse-drawn carts with e-rickshaws in Indian capital on Tuesday to provide respite to overworked animals and better financial opportunities to the poor owners. U.S.-based animal rights organization PETA, People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, replaced horse-drawn carts with e-rickshaws in Indian capital to provide respite to overworked animals and better financial opportunities to the poor owners. Under PETA's daily mechanization project, it provided electric rickshaws to over 10 daily wage workers, including vegetable vendors who used to carry their products on bullock carts and horses to provide them with a better livelihood. In Delhi and NCR, we have a project called Delhi Mechanization Project. In which we have a big and a big one. We have a lot of people who have a lot of people who have a lot of people who have a lot of people. एनिमल को जो इस जानवर को है ना एक अच्छी लाइफ मिले और उसको वहाँ पे संतुलित आहार मिले डॉक्टर चिकित्सा मिले और एक ऐसा जीवन मिले कि जो कभी उस पशु ने सोचा ना हो Bhimchand Divakar was one of the five horse owners who were handed keys to battery operated e-rickshaws on Tuesday. सर मैं अच्छा लगा गाड़ी ले ले रहने के लिए मुझे भी लगा कि हमारे जानवर भी अच्छी जगह पे और हमारी भी सेहत के लिए थोड़ा कुछ अच्छा ही रहेगा देखने इसलिए फिर हमने यहाँ पे अपना डॉक्यूमेंट दिए यहाँ पे हमें ये ये रिक्शा मिला काम करने के लिए। Founded in 2000, PETA is dedicated to defending the rights of all animals. This forum operates under the simple principle that animals are not ours to eat, wear, experiment on, or as a means of entertainment. PETA India educates policy makers and the public about animal abuse and promotes an understanding of the right of all animals to be treated with respect. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianNewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.